Agora TV. The world is thinking. Every holiday, like now and half term, at Jodrell Bank, we, we do Ask the Astronomer, where one of us stands up for half an hour and tries to fend off all the questions from the kids. It's always the kids that ask the most complicated questions, by the way. And what mostly boys like to ask is, what would happen if you fell into a black hole? Um, well, your prognosis isn't very good. <laughs> it's the first thing to say. Um, but we think we know, and there is a name for this, it's called spaghettification. <laughs> and if you don't believe, I haven't made that up, uh, if you type that into Google, it's, it's in Wikipedia, and it therefore must be correct. Um, <laughs> In fact, it comes from a book that you'll all have read and understood called A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. And he says in that book, if you go into a black hole, it's bit, a bit like turning into spaghetti. So that's the name, spaghettification. Um, if you don't like it, there is actually another name for it. It's called the noodle process. <laughs> and again, that's not making it up. It is absolutely real. Uh, and it tries to explain what actually happens. So let's consider uh, an astronaut uh, who's foolish enough to decide he will fall into a black hole. And there he is. He, he's quite slim and lithe, but, you know, he's a fairly normal astronaut. He could be in a spaceship, it doesn't matter, but he's doing that. Now, obviously, he's going to free fall in towards the black hole. And if you're in free fall, you don't notice straight gravity. You know, you, you're just... Just there, you, you, you are falling, but you don't feel as though anything's happening. But there's a problem. As you begin to come near the so-called event horizon, and what happens depends on how big it is, by the way, we'll come to that, you get squeezed. And it's the result of tidal forces. The point is that in this case, your feet are nearest the centre of gravity of the black hole than your arms and your head. So the gravitational force here is bigger than here. And the effect of that is to put you on a rack, to stretch you. Now, look, we have that effect with the moon. If there was no moon, the oceans on the Earth would be a nice sphere, shall we say, you know, just gently surrounding the Earth. But because of the tidal forces of the moon, the gravitational field of the moon is a bit stronger on the near side of the Earth than the far side. And, you know, it makes the water form a bulge both directions. So it becomes... But it's elliptical. Instead of round, it becomes elliptical. And that's the effect of tidal forces. We call them tidal forces because it causes the tides on the Earth. So it is a quite generalised thing that if you are close to a massive object, tidal forces can have quite major effects. And there's one example which we'll come back to in the next lecture, which is the little satellite, satellite Io of Jupiter. It's very close. The tidal forces basically make it do this by about 40 metres. It squeezes it and pulls it, and the friction caused makes the interior of Io molten, hence you get volcanoes. So it's not something specially to do with black holes. It's just that because the gravity of black holes is very great, the effects are large. So here we are. In this case, we're quite close to the event horizon, uh, and we're being squeezed and stretched. If the black hole wasn't very big say an eight solar mass black hole, in fact, I think the stretching would be such that 400 kilometres away, we wouldn't survive. But the bigger the black hole, the less the relative effects are until you get quite close. And if it was, say, a thousand mass black hole, you could actually pass through the event horizon and still be alive. You could see the universe around you. Nothing stops like getting into the black hole, it's just it can't get out. Things will look very distorted because the, the gravity of the black hole distorts the space around. But you could still see outwards. Um, you will live longer, as I've said, if the back black hole is very big. Eight solar mass black hole, you'd be dead 400 kilometres away from the event horizon, which is only 24 kilometres in radius. So that's not a good thing to try. But if you had a thousand solar mass black hole, as I've just said, you could pass through the event horizon and still be alive. But not for long. In fact, it's about seven seconds. 
how much of that you might be alive for one second of that. It would take seven seconds before you were totally spaghettified and became part of that quark mass, possibly, at the centre of the black hole. 